Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another one of my screencasts where I'll be using R and R Studio to analyze data I've never seen before. As usual, the data comes from the R for Data Science Online uh, Communities Project, Tidy Tuesday. So I'm really excited to take a look at this week's data, which is beer production. I like beer, so I think this is going to be an interesting, um, an interesting data set. Comes from the um, Alcohol, Tobacco, Tax, and Trade Bureau. Uh, state level beer production by year, number of brewers by production size, monthly beer stats aggregated across the United States. Uh, all right, and uh, reading through some of this quick stuff, removals, barrels removed, such as tax by the breweries, houses produced and oh, like removed for consumption. Okay, uh, so like removed. So like produced and then removed from the brewery to go sell it. Uh, all right, and uh, this looks like really, really, um, it looks like some really cool data cleaning uh, that uh, was this Thomas who must have done this. Uh, but yeah, all right, there's a couple data sets. Um, I'm excited to try them out. Looks like four data sets. I'm going to copy the script for getting them. Uh, save this as, where is it, beer? Not in the, not in the, in a, um, grumble, grumble, grumble. How do I see, where, where do I even have it saved? Repositories. There it is. And this is beer production. All right. And uh, here we go. I run some of this. Beer production. I'm also going to do library tidyverse to start us off. I'm also going to do theme set. These are some of the things I like to do to start off each of my analyses. All right, green materials. Okay, so I'm gonna look through each of these one by one. Uh, we got states, so we might be doing a map. We got brewer size, how many, how many things that have? A uh, number, okay, that's not one row per brewer, that's one row per size per year. Uh, okay, and uh, we have one on the type, mm, data type, I want to sort of take a quick look at this. Okay, it's all bales produced in beer in here, and then tax status type consumed on brewery premises. Uh, oh, wait, so then, okay, then we want to look at like this would be like a year, okay. I could look at year and month over time the amount of beer being produced. Okay, great. And uh, did I look at beer state yet? Did I look at beer state? I did not yet. Uh, that looks at state, just state, year, barrels. Okay, I could make an animated map here, for example, because that would allow me to say state, year, barrels, and then I wonder, type. Bottles and tank, kegs, kegs and premises, kegs and barrels on premises, three types. And finally, we have materials. Oh, I, did I look at materials yet? No, I didn't yet. All right. There's so much information here. That's really cool. I'm going to pick one. What am I going to pick? Um, this is this has kind of a lot going on. Um, tax status. Taxable. Okay. Tax status. Let me see. Totals. These aren't really subcategories. Now, if I, I'm just trying to get like a feel for this material type. Total used. Grain products. Non-grain products. Yeah, I think I already looked at this one, one once. But this is showing like it's separating them out between your grain products and non-grain product, all the things that are used, is it used, what is this then, the unit? Uh, is this in, bear, no, wait, it's in count data type. This one is exploring all the pounds of materials. Okay, so I can look at like, what goes into beer? All right, I might actually do that one first. I'm gonna say, what ingredients are used in beer? That's the first uh, beer in US beer production. That's the first question I'm going to ask. Um, I want to look at it, it over time, but first I'm actually going to say filter year is max of year and month is max of month. Why am I doing this? I want to look at one month first. Uh, so I have 12 observations for December 2017. And if I just said, um, here we go, data, uh, 
Uh, it's always pounds. So if I said type month current, I'd say, okay, here's what um, we see. Total grain. I'm so confused as to why total used would not be the sum of total grain products in this. What is the total used? Let me put in the other thing. Fill equals material type, and maybe that will give us a clue. No, it doesn't. I'm confused as to why total... I expect that this plus this... Oh, okay, I get it. It's because total grain products plus total non-grain products equals total used. Uh, okay, so grain products, non-grain products. Yeah, if I want to remove the total, which I would if I wanted to, like, say, make a graph of this over time. Uh, if I want to remove the total, what I would do with this would be... Let's see. Yes, what I would do. What I would do with this would be to um, take our brewing materials, filter not string detect uh, within material type does not contain the word total, and then well, I could apply the same thing. Heck, maybe I'll do this just once here. And uh, um, before and I want to add one quick thing. I want to do a type. FCT reorder type by month current. Here we go. Okay, so this is like ingredients used in one month. Uh, so in terms of pounds, there's really no comparison. It's all it's all about them those malt and malt products, uh, then some hops, some barley, uh, and barley products. Uh, it's interesting what ends up in other when all of these are so so small. Um, I don't know, uh, but the, um, hmm, hmm, just think of a couple things, that can, a couple things, that ways I can, I can visualize this. Uh, so then I'm going to start with, hmm, yeah, I'm going to start by looking at this over time. To look at this over time, I'm actually not crazy about the whole year-month separation thing. I'm going to combine them together into date. How am I going to do that? I'm going to load up library Lubu date <clears throat> because what I'm going to do is paste uh, the co I'm going to combine year. Uh, I need um I need to do something here. I need to say sprint depth. I need to make this into a year like a, a year form. Actually, I might. Eh, it might work okay. I'm going to find out how this how this does. I'm going to say year month and one. What does that date column look like? It's not going to be an actual date column. It's going to be the 2018 one one. So it's going to be six one. And I'm actually going to try sign on that. I'm going to apply the MDY, MDY, YMD function from Lubridate. Ah, look at that. It parses it, even though there's just a couple spaces in between. Uh, I don't know if, I wonder, is there, there's not a YM function, is there? Nope. So I do YMD, of course not. It has to be the first of the month. Point is, I'm changing this to be the first of the month instead of this separate year and month uh, business. The year and month, can, there's other cases where it might be really helpful, but if I actually want to look at changes over time, this is probably the way to do it. Okay, so if I take, um, I'm actually going to do that right away in this first step. So that if I, whenever I want to, I can look at the date. Okay, and I'm taking this, and that would have let me here just say date equals max of date. And now I can still make that graph. That's great. Uh, okay, what I'm going to do is take a, take my date. I'm going to do... Uh, now, this is not going to work quite yet. I'll make it work. What I'll do is I'll say you don't include the totals. And now I want date, month, current, geom call. Uh, oh, uh, fill equals type. Not material type, but type. Uh, and now we see is... Uh, what do we see? We see, oh, uh, something's up with the data since 2016. It looks like rice and rice products don't exist in the data. Um, this is almost, uh, for example, and everything else is much lower. That might explain why it looked a little, it was looked funny to me that like rice and rice products, sugar and syrups was so low. Uh, it looks to me like we don't want to look at this data uh, for t after 2015. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, it's probably a parsing issue. Um, which I'll, maybe we should raise it as an issue on the Tidy Tuesday uh, repo. I'm going to filter for just 2016, before 2016. And uh, does it look good? 
it does, it, these two months, which suddenly, it's like, uh, it's like some of the data just kind of drops out. I am skeptical of these months. I am skeptical that they suddenly, that, that suddenly sugar and syrups are not used for one month out of these, uh, time points. I don't think it's going to make a big difference, so I'm not, I'm not like overly going to worry about it, but I just wanted to, um, to note that. Other thing I might do here is reorder the, um, uh, the type is FCP reorder type by month current with some as the way of aggregating them. Now, let me check whether that, that looks pretty good. The problem is now it's actually, the legend is actually now reversed relative to, oh, nope. Nope, I just read it backwards. Multi-malt products, sugar and syrups, rice and rice products, corn and corn products, products, hops and so on. And all the way at the top, hops use it extracts. Kind of not really anywhere in there. Um, that looks pretty good. Uh, okay, and instead of months current, which is not, a, I'm gonna make these slightly better. Uh, Axis label, say pounds used in beer production. I don't think, do we need a material? Material, material. This looks pretty good to me. I don't love the um, the scientific notation. So I'm actually gonna do scale y continuous labels equals scales, comma. How is this gonna look? Let's find out how that looks. Eh, 600 billion. I could have said in billions. Nah, it's not, it's not too crazy. Uh, I definitely could have said that. These months are bothering me. Uh, I think this one is December. It looks like December 2015. This one, November maybe 2015. Uh, the months bother me. The ones where, where malt products, where, where like uh, something just like disappeared out of it. Uh, it bothers me. Um, but I'm, I'm not gonna like drop the month just yet. I'm just kind of noting that. Uh, okay, so that's a plot of um, material of beer materials over time. We could have divided it down by other dimensions. Uh, instead of doing it as pounds used in beer production by material, I could have done it with um, string detect only the total count uh, material type. Total products. Watch this. Now I've got. Now see, ah, see. See. Now you really can see that kind of those two weirdo months. What are those weirdo months? Maybe I should remove them. All right. I'm starting to feel good about the idea of removing them. Ah, I'm not going to remove them. Whatever. Uh, and now we have our total non-grain products and our total grain products. Uh, okay. So a couple ways we can visualize it over time. Um, I've got an idea. I'm gonna use this, think about a second. Okay, brew materials. What's the um, count material type? Not material type, I wanted data type. Nope, I did not want that. I wanted, what I want? Yes, I wanted these. Okay, ha, 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 ha. All right, I'm going to use this to show off a new framework. It's called the Tidy Metrics and Shiny Metrics Framework. It was developed by um, Ramnath Adyanathan, myself, and Kaylin Medeiros, and um, uh, along with a couple other contributors. Uh, and we, and I'm gonna show, um, I'm gonna share some links to it. It's a relatively new set of packages uh, within, called the um, Tidy Metrics, uh, sorry, the Tidy Metrics package and the Shiny Metrics package for visualizing, uh, for calculating and visualizing um, interactive metrics over time. I haven't just done this in a live screencast before. So this is gonna be new. I might not get everything right. I might need to uh, look up some documentation and I need to play around with stuff. Uh, and the API is still being developed. So I appreciate your patience, but I wanna show how this works because I'm really um, uh, excited about this, um, this collection of tools. So the package is called, the first package is called Tidy Metrics. You can install it from uh, GitHub. Uh, I'm adding this quickly, DevTools install. GitHub, Ramnith V, 
tidy metrics. Why am I doing this? I'm doing, why am I using tidy metrics? Because I'm looking at data over time split by dimensions, uh, non-grain products, total grain products, things like, um, or by each uh, material type. Uh, as soon as I'm doing that, uh, tidy metrics becomes really powerful uh, over time by dimensions. So here's, I'm, I'm gonna show how that works. I wanna keep this, okay? And I, I don't wanna include the total ones. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what's called cross by dimensions. Cross by dimensions means that I want to look by the material type as well as by the type. I want to, um, material type and then by the type. So material type is, uh, and this does something, this, this does something actually really interesting. Uh, this actually increases the size of our data. It used to be 864. It is now 3,456. Uh, what happened is that we duplicated the data. I'm gonna show, if we do distinct material type and type, it now has uh, multiple rows for each version of the data. It has one for all material types and all types within that. It is one for all grain products, one for all non-grain products, and then it divides them down by the actual material. Uh, I don't like it being called type. I'm gonna do something tricky here. I'm gonna say material equals type, and I'm gonna say this by material. Yeah, it's just for some reason that this makes me feel a little bit better. All grain products, all non-grain products. What I did is duplicate the data so that I can summarize it. Um, it takes some getting used to it, and um, there's a whole talk on how the cross by dimensions um, works by uh, Kayla Medeiros at DCR. I'll, I'll share a, maybe I'll do this um, DCR, tidy metrics. Just wanna show the, um, no, this is not, where is it? This is this the one. Yeah, so there's a whole talk um, on uh, metric design and dashboard with tidy metrics and shiny bones. Uh, definitely, rec um, definitely recommended for learning more about this, and I'll try and share other resources in, along with the video. Okay, so I've, what, but the way that, that the cross by dimensions works is it duplicates the data, so I can now summarize. Uh, I can say, uh, I can say the total number of pounds, and say sum of month current. And what it did is it actually, at, this actually calculated all possible cross sections of this data. It says across all time, here's the number of pounds across all materials, across each of these types of materials. It also got it within all non um, within all grain products, within all non grain products. Uh, so that actually, uh, what I did is I calculated these, these metrics over time for overall, for all grain, and for all non-grain. Uh, we have the, uh, each of those in the results. But I can go even further. Along with crossing by dimensions, I can cross by periods. So what pe cross by periods does is say, right now I've got a date column, but I want to actually include um, not just by month, which I have, but also by quarter, and by year. Oop. Let's see, here we go. Watch me watch me get this wrong. Oh good. It oh wait. It just assumes the column is called date. Um right. Cross by periods assumes the table has a um uh, a date column in it. Uh all right. There's some parts that still need to be written up here. Um yeah. Uh, but this is still a work in progress, but I wanted to still show how this tidy metrics framework worked. How does it work? Um, if I, these are now, this is now a metric where I say metric, uh, let's say brewing, brewing summarized. I still have my data. I have now my data for all, all by month. So if I said filter material, I'm also going to throw in ungroup. I don't need this to be ungrouped to group anymore. Material type is all. Material is all. I can do NB date NB pounds. Uh, oh, and uh, and I can choose to have period be month. Oh, equals equals month. Now I get my total pattern of um, production per month. But I could, but I also have a period by quarter. It's in the same data. Uh, if I actually view this, 
you can see here's all my by month stats, here's all my by quarter stats, here's all my by year stats. And then I could have said, eh, by want by year. And it actually adds it up across each year and shows that in fact, the total materials might be decreasing a little bit. Uh, okay, so that this, it was um, showing my, um, uh, this shows how cross by dimensions and uh, uh, cross by periods calculates by month, by quarter, and by year. But I can go further. I don't, I want material type is not equal to all, and I switch fill to be material type. I didn't redo any calculations. I just filtered for a different uh, cross section of this data. And I'm now looking by year for, not, for grain products and non-grain products. What if I wanted it to be by material? I would switch these out. And now I've got it divided up by material by year. Or if I preferred, I could have looked at it by quarter. This is really common in business intelligence where you're going to want to, um, some things are meaningful by month, some only by year, some by quarter. Uh, some by, could be by week or by day that we don't have that uh, in this, this data. So now I'm looking at the number of pounds of uh, material produced per day. I used NB pounds here. Uh, that has a, a that prefix NB has a particular meaning within um, tidy metrics. I'll get to that. Try, I'll try to get to that later. So the story was this: comp these cross by dimensions, cross by period, meant that I computed basically every calculation by month, by period, and by quarter and by year that I might want to on this uh, on this data, as well as by both of these dimensions. I could have added even more dimensions if I wanted to. Okay. That was tidy metrics. Now I'm going to show um, the creating these plots is kind of cool. We could have done that with a group by and a summarize. I could have created uh, this by year, by quarter, whatever I wanted. The real power of tidy metrics uh, comes when I turn when I when I bring in shiny metrics and turn this into a um a structured metric format. Uh, that takes a little bit of work, and it's still be the, the format is still being developed. I'm going to show something called use metrics scaffold. Uh, what, metrics need to come with documentation. It's really critical of how we um, share these. So I'm actually going to, what I do is I take this, this is going to look a little weird, but I copy this and I put it up here into, here it is, metrics and dimensions. Uh, and what I what I say is I actually now need to give both the, this uh, documentation. So I say pounds number number of pounds produced. This is actually going in the YAML header. It's a little bit interesting, but you'll see why it's useful. Uh, by do documenting here, it's going to make a really useful shiny widget for exploring it. Uh, number of pounds uh, used in beer production in the U.S. Uh, material type either grain or non-grain products, uh, material, I'm just going to say title is type, give it a short name, grain, non-grain, material, and the material is uh, wheat, hops, corn, etc. Uh, okay, why did I, uh, I wrote up these, um, this title and this description. I documented my metrics based on this description. I think I need something here, which I'm not actually crazy about as an API. I might need to change it. I think I can say something like year production owner is me. I think that might work. Uh, all right. I don't know that I need an owner. We'll find out if I do. Uh, what I'm then do is I say create metrics on brewing summarized. Oh, it does need an owner. Beer, no, it's gone, right? Metrics beer production, owner is me. I'm DRAB. All right, what it just did is create uh, brewing metrics. What I just did, what we just did is create a, um, uh, an aggregation of this data by these dimensions and these um, dates and it show, and this is called a table metric. Uh, it, it has a name, it has two dimensions, it has a period, it has periods, it shows what the dates are, and it even saves when we, when we updated that. That's really useful if you use this within a company uh, for, um, 
uh, Forex business intelligence. Uh, but the story is that we I've saved this table metric, which is going to allow me to visualize this data interactively. The way to visualize it interactively is with um, the shiny metrics package. Shiny metrics is a little rough around the edges and tidy metrics is both are still being actively developed by myself and Ramnath. Uh, but the um, the way that the uh, that we we create sh we uh, the, we use shine metrics is check this out. I do preview metric of brewing metrics dollar sign. This is beer production because that's the name of his beer production. NB pounds number of pounds. Just work, just work, just work. Yes, ah, ah. Oh, that's embarrassing. Oh, that's so embarrassing. Oh boy. Oh gosh. That's the table metric. Let me see. Make sure I have the latest version. Ramnath V. This is really, oh boy, this is exactly what I was hoping wouldn't, ha wouldn't happen. Uh, I'm gonna restart R for good for measure. Rerun this section. Brewing materials did not run. Oh, I need to do library lubricate here. Just work, just work, just work. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's great. That's um, it's just what I wanted to have happen. What would happen if I didn't? If I only used one dimension, not two? Let's find out if I get any luckier. No, no, that one won't work. This one might work. Wow. Okay, so that's really embarrassing. Uh, it's hard to say how embarrassing this is. All right. Oh. Oh, okay. The problem was that it's accustomed to looking only at a particular time range, like the last year, but this data didn't have anything for the last year. Okay, so this worked a little bit, enough to show how it's supposed to work, and then I'll have to open a bug report. Uh, sorry about, about that. I um, wonder if that was... I'm gonna try one thing. I'm gonna try quickly, what if I threw back in material type Time. Okay, so the bug was okay. Sorry, uh, and I'm gonna open this in a browser. All right. So the bug. I know what where the bug came from. It came from when I was looking only at the last year, and there was no data in the last year. It could be a little bit done. That could be done a little better, but we'll. I'll. I'll, I'll let that leave that be. Um, this is what it was trying to show, and it was a little just uh, some hiccups along the way. This is called a metric panel. This is something that, that Shiny Metrics provides for visualizing a metric, and it's an interactive visualization of everything, we, of everything we've calculated in those cross buys. So for starters, it's a plotly visualization, which means that I can look over time at any particular month and say, oh, okay, here's the number of pounds produced. But I can also, um, instead of aggregating it by month, switch to aggregating it by quarter. So odd to me it doesn't let me aggregate by year. I don't know why that's the case. Uh, I'm, but uh, yeah, I can look at it. Here we are, aggregated by quarter. Now I can also say, switch to, to um, from, from uh, looking overall to type. Same, uh, same totals, but now I've broken it down by dimension, grain products and non-grain products. Notice that if I mouse over this, it actually has that description. That's why I spent a little bit of work earlier doing descriptions up at the top of this file. Uh, 
Notice here I have my um, number of pounds produced type material here. That was um, that uh, was how it was documented, how it made this into a pretty visualization. It tells me when it was last updated. I um, looked at it by month. I look at it by quarter. Uh, I can pick a custom period for it. Uh, I can even download the data as a CSV. If I open that, that'll be the data that's currently being shown. Can I do this? Will this work? Looks like it doesn't work right now. Okay. Um, I'd like to be able to switch to percentages. percentages. Where did my year data, where did my year period go? Really thought that I had a year period in there. Maybe there was no, um, maybe it doesn't support, maybe it's shiny metrics doesn't support year. All right, that's another another thing uh, worth fixing. All right, so this is still a work in progress, but the, the point is that um, we created without a lot of code. We created a, an interactive visualization that allows breaking down uh, by one dimension or multiple dimensions over time. Uh, and there's a lot of kinds of visualizations that that can be used for. Uh, so yeah, notice this also, it, it ordered it in a, in a useful order with the most common ones on the bottom, the rarest ones on top. Uh, it has the ability to download it. There's other features, even if I click on this question mark, it even gives me that documentation, like a little bit of help. Uh, so this is all, uh, Ramath is the main um, genius behind this work, uh, but yeah, he and I are definitely need to work on, fi on uh, fixing some of those bugs. Uh, but yeah, this is, um, this is a way of, of creating an interactive um, visualization of a metric that lets you break it down by one dimension, like non-green products, green products, a, a deeper dimension, or just overall. All right, so I just want to show uh, tidy the tidy metrics and shiny metrics framework uh, for visualizing inter data and metrics interactively. All right, so that was um, that was fun. I got to, to show that um, and uh, really scared myself. Um, let's look at a few other things we can look at. You know, we could look at hmm. Brewer size, aha. Number of brewers, barrels, size. You know, hmm. I could turn this into a metric. The problem is, as I said, I think, so this could be turned into a metric as well in terms of like aggregated by, by, by brewer size. The year thing is gonna get in the way is that um, it's, uh, it looks like, like they, they're not accustomed to a, to a period of year. Um, I'll have to get back to that. Uh, okay, so this is brewer size, number of brewers, total barrels, uh, etc. Am I going to visualize some of these? I could. It doesn't feel like there's a ton I'd get out. I'm, I'm gonna make. I'll make a quick visualization. Uh, brewer size distribution. So how many b barrels come from larger brewers versus smaller ones? Uh, what I do is I would say brewer size year. Well, let's do total barrels. Geom. Call. Here's my start. There's my total barrels produced. Uh, is that total barrels produced or? Yeah, that's I think total barrels uh, produced, not uh, produced or removed or whatever. Uh, this looks like it also counts the ones that are still there or that are um, consumed on the on the premises, uh, like in a brew pub. And uh, for the um, so we have plot and let's add fill brewer size. So many brewer sizes. Oop, uh, this has a total. Uh, so I'm gonna have to remove the total. That's no good. Filter uh, brewer size is not equal to total. This kind of already was crossed by dimensions in a way. Uh, all right, so most of them come from this six million barrels and over category, which makes sense that the largest one, uh, that the largest category is the, um, is the, the most barrels are produced by huge uh, breweries. Uh, that just makes that does make a lot of sense. Notice this is a crazy order. Look at all that. Look at all that crazy order of one, one million. It's because it's an alphabetical order. What if we wanted to have it in a better order? How would I go about that? I'll show you. Uh, there is a function readr called parse number. I want to see if it works. Parse number brewer size. Oh. Yes, 
parse number gets the first number out of a um out of a string. It might not always work if there's lots of cruft around it, but this it's like each of these starts with a number. So this will get the number six million and one, one million and one million and one, half a million, etc. Uh, each of these ends up with a um uh, with a result, but I don't actually I don't want to create that as a new column. I want to do brewer size equals FCP reorder. Uh, reorder brewer size by parse number of brewer size. It doesn't like the zero. Uh, zero is down here. Ugh. Who knows where zero is? So zero, I don't know, zero ended up kind of nowhere. But notice it actually did a pretty good job ordering them. The exception is the zero and the under, it ended up in, in the wrong position. Uh, also, there's just way too many categories. Uh, we really need to lump these. Uh, I'm actually going to do, yeah, I'm actually going to do brewer size is FCP lump, lump the brewer size uh, based on the, wait, yeah, based on the top five, the weight is uh, the, what is it? Total barrels. Non negative, non missing. What happened here? That worked. Oh, I see. Uh, the problem was that. Hmm. Uh, does this need to be a character? Uh, FCT reorder, I thought it could be a, um, oh, I see it. Um, parse number has character of brewer size. Uh, parse number doesn't work on a factor. All right, that worked pretty well, except that other ended up down here. Um, I'm going to do something with that. I'm going to say barrel number is this. And I'm going to throw something in. I'm going to say coalesce this with one. I want. To, oh. Ah! Look at that! Look at that! Look at look what happened! All right, what what just happened? I said I want to parse the barrel brewer size, parse the number out of it. But if it's missing, I want to just give like one, give a lone number. Then we get other. That's a couple, small ones. Hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, million, two million, six million. Uh, six million. That is how it communicated total barrels. Mostly I wanted to show this because uh, I thought it would be interesting to see how do you order a column like this that has the X to Y brewer size. I want to show how you would order it. Whew, okay, so that was brewer size. Um, I could turn this into a um, into a shiny into a uh, uh, pa a metric panel. I could create a metric out of these. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, is it, uh, sort of this? Yes. But the general story here was that most breweries, uh, most beer is produced by large breweries. I wonder why 2 million only, two to 6 million only appears in this year. Is that because nothing fell into here? They're out of the under 2 million or above 6 million? Or was it a parsing issue? I'm, I'm inclined to think, well, how many is this? So here's what I'm, what I'm doing. I'm, I'm working backwards a little bit. Uh, how many are in the two million to six million category? Uh, well, let's find out. Let's do the um, two million to six million barrels. Brewer size filter. Brewer size is that. Yeah, so it wasn't that nothing fell into that category. How do I know that? Uh, because notice in 2011, there already were 17.7 million barrels. There'd have to be at least three breweries in this category. I don't think that three breweries jump from having just under 2 million to having uh, just under 6 million. Uh, this is too convenient. Uh, I think the data is missing for these first two years, the number of breweries between two and 6 million. Uh, so just finding one other issue. Can I see any other, can I see other issues with this data? Uh, not right now, but yeah. All right, that was taking a look at brewer, brewer size. Uh, okay, uh, did I, should I look at beer text? Uh, 
oh, a lot could be done. There's plenty that can be done with this. I'm not going to look at this yet. But one thing this reminds me is month prior year, uh, we might want to look at season. If we want to look at seasonality, I just want to show one other way I could have shown this brewing materials graph. Uh, take a look at brewing materials. What if I said filter for only material type equals total used? There it is. I could have said look at year. Um, year, month, current. Genome and color equals factor of year. And I did a year here, I meant to do month. What this would do is look at seasonality without and throw in an expand limits y equals zero. Okay. Uh, this would look at seasonality without looking at the, um, uh, without look, without uh, like looking at the trend over time, we would just say like, what's the trend within each year? And it looks like they're always lowest in November and December. Kind of a spike here. Um, do I trust that? I don't know. Um, but yeah, and kind of always highest in the summer, it looks like. Uh, here's the month. Here's the number of, of pounds produced in total. Uh, all right. I just wanted to take a quick look at that. Uh, to show that that's how I could use month without using year. Look at seasonality. Okay, so um, that was looking at yeah, the all the brewing brewer size beer. I haven't looked at beer tax, but it's kind of similar. Let's look at the last one. Where is beer produced? Let's look by state. Uh, so count type. All right, so there's bottles and cans, kegs and barrels on premises. If I weighted these, I wonder, barrels, <clears throat> bottles and kegs, kegs and barrels on premises. Uh, it looks like most of the bottle cans makes, uh, makes sense to me. Uh, on premises, relatively small, uh-huh. And uh, all right, where are, so I could ask, I could ask, a, I, I wanna make a map. Uh, first thing I wanna do is group by, let's see, I'm gonna filter for year equals, I wonder, do, is this data trustworthy? To ask, to answer that, I'm gonna say group by year. Uh, do we have anything weird patterns over year? Remember, I saw another weird pattern by year. Group by year, summarize barrels equals sum of barrels. Nope, I don't even have to graph that. It looks like it's generally declining a little bit, but like nothing that exciting, okay? And, uh, all right, but um, but I'm gonna say, who consumes beer on premises? What, so it's like brew pubs, we have some, we have like, I think Brooklyn Lager has a brew pub in Brooklyn, uh, and um, uh, so what are the ones I like? I like uh, Long Trail Ale in Vermont. Um, uh, Triumph beer in a brew pub in Princeton. Uh, yeah, th but um, here's, so what I say is filter for type is, uh, um, is on premises and year equals max year, uh, which is say 2019. So I say who can, uh, and then I can say range descending, not year, uh, barrels. Ooh, I don't want total included. All right, so um, some of this is just so is is kind of correlated with uh, what do we say um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, like total population. California is also the most populous state, but it's some of it's not. Uh, North Carolina has tons of beer uh, to had on drink on, on premises. There must be uh, some breweries or whatever large breweries there. Uh, it's not the large. It's far from the the largest most populous state. Uh, New York is a little lower than we might expect. Um, just based on population. There's no reason to believe population is uh, runs everything here. Just, I just wanted to kind of note that. Okay. Um, now, uh, it's interesting. I could also, what if, say, what if it's as a percentage of all the beer produced? Uh, so I could say group by state, UK percent is barrels over sum of barrels. And then filter for Type is on 
premises, because I, I did it by state, I've now got what percentage of the beer produced in a state is consumed on premises. North Dakota, 90, 98% of the barrels of beer in North, that are produced in, in North Dakota are consumed on premises. Okay, first of all, that's just kind of interesting. Uh, North Dakota, I would never expect one of them to be as high as nine as 98%. Uh, if I said cans and, what, cans and kegs? What is it? Kegs and cans? No, it was cans and bottles. I had a, I had a distinct somewhere here. I'm trying to find that distinct. Could have just rerun it, but you know. Wasted time. Here we go. Uh, okay, so like Tennessee, 96% ends up in bottles and cans. Um, and, uh, kegs and, was it, kegs and casks? What would it say it was? Kegs and barrels. Nowhere is more than 50% end up in kegs and barrels, but, but the highest is Maine. Okay? Uh, I, I kind of still like my on-premises. Why did I want to create that? Uh, I want to create a map. I'm saving... Group, beer percents, state, and call it state percents. What am I up to? Uh, states percents 2019. Right now I'm still looking just at 2019. Uh, what I'm up to is I want to create a map. And how to create a map? I need to create, I need to get, um, I'm trying to remember how, how um, um, give me one second while I'm, I remind myself how this works. Uh, there's a whole, there's a whole um, approach to this. Uh, it's new. They, 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 keep, they keep changing it, which is great. Uh, but I'm just reminding myself how they, how they change it. There is state. Uh, plot 2 state border SF. Uh, I'm just reminding myself, here we are. States. Aha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I see. I need to kind of remind myself how this worked. Uh, all right. So I'm loading up the maps package. I'm loading up the SF package. Oh boy, maps replaces the map pad. Never, never the biggest, biggest fan of that. But, uh, and now I get the states. So, here we are. There we are. Okay, this is a feature collection of um of states. Uh, continental United States, not going to include Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, yep, no Alaska, no Hawaii. It has our IDs: um, Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, so on. I need to join this with the state names. Uh, I'm remembering. I'm reminding myself now. What is the way I would go about doing that? Does this have District of Columbia? This one doesn't have District of Columbia. It's so annoying. Uh, they um, R comes built in with some state names. Uh, let me see one moment while I remind myself. Well, uh, I know how I can go about this. It's just going to be not quite as cool as, as I, uh, not quite as good as, as I liked it. Um, all right, what I want to do is do beer states. I need to get the state names in here. Uh, they're actually, notice we actually have built into R. It's a little bit interesting. We have state name and state, is it code? State, which is state. State, oh, where's my two, where's my two letter codes? State abbreviation, there it is. Um, so I actually can do something here. If anytime I want to add the state names with I have the code, I can say state, I can say um, ID equals uh, state abbreviation match. Uh, match is a handy base R function that says what, look, where within this vector does something else occur? I can say match state to state.name or built-in state.name. Nope, nope, nope. Look at me getting it backwards. There it is. Uh, so what I did is I actually said take state name. This is kind of similar to an inner join. Uh, it's just a kind of a base R trick. Um, 
actually more sort of closer to a left join. Base our trick within that. Uh, one problem that it has, it's not, it's just, it's going to miss the, the District of Columbia, but that won't really hurt our map. Um, uh, some, maybe someone who's watching this will know a better way to, to go about this. Um, so I've got my IDs. I'm also going to do two lower on this. String to lower, it, it's the same thing, but it's the string our way to go about it. Uh, and then I can, but then why am I doing that? Because then I can join it with my states. Uh, that, oh, hmm, it's annoying that it used to be a, that the other one's a factor. Eh, well, yeah, uh, so what, uh, what this does is it actually joined the, um, oh, the air states, There's too many rows, oh yeah, filter, year is 2019, I didn't do that, oh, state percents, that's what I was looking for, aha, haha, kind of, uh, filter, I can say filter type equals uh, on premises. And now I join that. So now I've got 48 states. I'm missing Alaska, Hawaii. I'm also missing the District of Columbia. That's just not in the state vector. Uh, it's not going to really make a difference in the graph. Uh, but it shows you I'm not really a, 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 normally a spatial person, a spatial statistics person. Okay. So I've joined in the states. Now, what's actually really cool is I, is I do ggplot, and I do geom sf, and I just say fill equals percent. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Hmm. Really thought... Where's the following missing aesthetics ge geometry? It's odd to me that I had to do this. I don't remember having to do that before. Um, maybe this is because I set the aesthetic here. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of going blind here. No. All right. It's odd to me, but I just said geometry equals geom. Okay and fill equals percent, and I have a map. I throw in a chord map to give this a projection and it requires, oh, oh, chord SF, sure. Which I guess it already had. I think it already had it, okay, ignore that. Uh, and I'm gonna throw in a quick GG themes theme map. I think it looks a little better, what do you think? I think it looks better. Uh, I also, so this shows where do, so let's remember what we're visualizing. We're visualizing where do, what states brew their own, uh, brew, uh, are, um, are, is a lot of their beer consumed on premises. In which states? is a lot of beer consumed on premises. All right, I'm also actually not incredibly crazy about the dark blue to light blue. Uh, I kind of prefer, what is it? I, I think I use, what do you scale? Fill gradient to my personal favorite is low is blue, high is red, and midpoint. 0.5 feels reasonable here. Yeah, I just I kind of like this. It's not everyone's gonna like it. Some people are gonna like blue to yellow. I'm gonna try blue to yellow. Want me to try blue to yellow? Sure. Um. Hmm. Do I have this more? Blue to orange. I'm not really like an artistic kind of sort. Uh. So I'm I'm not overly focusing on this. But uh, yeah, that, that looks a little bit better and labels as scales percent. It's a lot of beer produced. And throw in a fill is percentage premises. Ta-da!
Yeah, it's reasonable. Uh, you know how I also could have, pre have presented this? Is I could have said, I'm gonna separate this. I'm gonna call this states joined. Uh, oh, I had neglected, oop, 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 look at me, look at me neglecting all over the place. I neglected to do filter type, 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 type equals on-premises. Facet wrap by type. Reordering. I like to put the aesthetic things later in the graph. Uh, if I'm doing a facet here, I probably want n row is two. Oh, I want legend. I got to move that legend. Theme legend position equals. I'm gonna try. I want bottom right. I don't even remember how to set bottom right. I have no, is there space? Is there a dash? C zero, zero one, maybe? But that's gonna be, oh, look at me, getting it backwards. Yeah, I actually, I'm a customer, like top, left, right. Where'd it go? Look at that. No idea what I'm doing. Just not even the first idea. What would this do? Look at me. Don't know nothing. Nothing about nothing. Does this work? That's not so bad. Uh, I kind of, uh, it's not amazing. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Wouldn't it have been great if the legend were here? I think it would have been great. But it's not. Uh, Alright, so, so, so the story then is like, oh, percentage consumed. I'm going to try right. It's not that bad. It's not so bad. Okay, uh, so the story is... Um, how is beer produced in, uh, how is beer consumed All right, so what this really shows that nowhere is there a hot spot of kegs and barrels. We did see that with a little exploration. Uh, but some have higher than others, like, you know, Washington has a little higher and such. And uh, Maine was the highest. Uh, but there are definitely are hotspots uh, on-premises. And they're ones where mostly ends up in bottles and cans, like uh, New York, like Texas. Uh, yeah, like, well, it looks like California, pretty, yeah, basically, yeah. Okay, so this is where maybe there are breweries that generally are producing, sending it out, um, and, so, and so on. Uh, okay. So that was looking. That was looking. Uh, that was making a map. We've got one last step, which is animation. Uh, there is time here that I'm not. We're not even paying attention to. Uh, so, what, uh, but I, we can turn this into a, into a pretty nifty, I think, animation with just a little bit of work. What am I doing? I'm going to take this. I'm going to recreate this whole graph. But the difference is, I'm going to take my states percent 2019. I'm not going to filter it for, for only the maximum year. Do need to move total. I don't look at it in the joint down anyway. But, all right, this, 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 this. Uh, the story is once I'm here, I still have a year variable. Where's the year variable? There it is. I want to visualize that over time. I don't do a ton of animation, so I need to remind myself how this works. I think it goes like this. I think that I add transition oops, manual uh, by year. And I think state, and then I think in the title I add, I think this is what I do. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. Look at me getting this wrong. Oh. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. I still have year. I'm gonna try removing this. All right. I was doing something wrong there with the um the title. Uh, I know there's a way to, to display the year, but look at this. It's a low resolution. This should show things changing. It does not. Nothing is happening. Oh, there it goes. Changing a little bit. Something is up with my visualization. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to try something quickly. I'm going to try changing this to type equals on premises. Do I see any change? Uh, GG animate. I'm actually going to. I remember there being changes recently, so I'm actually going to install. I'm going to reinstall GG animate. I know as soon as just I can re overly re uh, search GG animate. But the. Um, I'm going to reinstall it from dev. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. Look at things change. Hmm. I'll get rid of the midpoint five. Or should I? Hmm. It's odd to me because I would have expected. Didn't I, I would have expected by the end to have it to look different. Up, up, change, change, change. It's like on-premises got more and more common uh, in this animation. Um, all right. Restart our... Let me make sure of this. Oop, beer states. There it is, yep. Oh, and states was created in this line. And if I did this and I said year, oh no, it was something like frame. I can't remember how that, how does this, I keep forgetting. Uh, I don't have that much practice with this. I want to create an animated. This is called a choropleth. If I do a math and I say like, here's the um the time the oh five six ah there it's frame but it's not the value of the year uh, variable. It doesn't allow that. It doesn't allow for that. Did you animate title? Frame frame time. Frame time. Transition time year. I'm going to try something. Transformer, oh, it requires a new package. This, uh, this will make it more, by saying it's time, it'll make it more continuous. Uh, but yeah, it's going to give me, it's going to look like this, isn't it? But it's going to look like this. Oh, I can do. That might look good. Hmm. One more while I set this up. It's taking its time, but it's trying to make it more continuous, like uh, recognizing that the year variable represents something continuous, not like separate numbers. Whenever I see states and time, it's like, you gotta make a, an animated choropleth. You know, it's like the thing to do. Ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, fifteen. You know, it's weird to me. 
is that I thought that by 2019 it looked really different. It looked like a, some of them were at 98%. But it does look to me like it's generally rising. Isn't that interesting? Huh. I didn't really like get a feel for that. It's almost like it doesn't change for a couple years. Now let me throw out this filter, see how it looks. This will be our final visual, our final animation. It'll take a second. More longer than a, than a second. I'm not sure how long it'll take. Yeah, look at that, look at it go. It's like brew pubs were so rare and they got more common. Ooh, that's taking a while. I'm gonna let it, I'll let it, I'll let it run. Uh, just to review, what we did is we didn't look at beer tax, it was pretty similar. We looked at brewing materials over time, uh, particularly by month and by year. We said what was, uh, how much barley, how much everything was used. Uh, and as I said, I'm gonna review in a second, we used our metric framework to visualize that. We looked at brewer size just a little bit, and that was mostly useful because I parsed that parsing of the um, the number out so that I could put it in a meaningful order. States, we used a little from the SF package and the MAP package to get a um, uh, to get a, a, a an, an S a tidy SF object, which then can be visualized with Geom SF, uh, and uh, this like geometry equals Geom fill equals percent. Really, really quite handy. And I'm going to give this one moment. Let's see how we're doing. And we use, of course, GG Animate. I've used it in a few other screencasts, but it's really so handy. Uh, GG Animate. Can I zoom in on this? Wouldn't that be good to zoom in? Can I zoom in at all? I don't even know how to zoom in. This looks weird. It's definitely, this just looks wrong. Something's wrong with that. It can't possibly, it can't all look like this in 2010. It's straight up impossible. Did I do the group by wrong? Ugh. I did the group by wrong. Okay. Sorry. Did, did, everyone, did everyone else catch that? Look at, look at me. Look at me go. Uh, it's completely wrong. Group by state and year, I need to say. Uh, what's the distribution? Um, and I'm actually going to leave in the on-premises filter just to speed it up a tiny bit. I can move in by state and year. Oh, I get it. Okay. Yeah, so I, I did something super wrong there. I was trying to say like what the distribution is within each state, within each year, and uh, that that just didn't didn't work what I was doing. So I'm gonna let it run for one second. Ooh, look at me going over time. So if I had a live screencast, if someone could have caught that bug. We really should do a live screencast at some point. If nothing else, we just like make conversation while this is playing. Ooh, ah, ah, this animation looks way better. Ah, I feel better. I feel better. Does everyone else feel better? I feel better. There's percentage, yeah, see, it's like 10. Kind of see, oh, I guess brew pubs are showing up and then disappearing. Like, yeah, notice it looks continuous because I use that frame time situation. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. So that's the set. Of, this is the um, the set that we had. We could have done this on every uh, on every facet. I'm not going to do that. Um, we did what we needed to in terms of creating an animated coral plant. All right. So that was a bunch of visualizations of beer production over time. Last thing I wanted to revisit is remember we used cross by dimensions and cross by periods when I had this data set that had two dimensions I was interested in: material type and type, which is like the specific material, as well as maybe the totals. When I cared about all of those, I was able to run this brewing summarized, and then, mm -hmm, I was able to create this brewing summarized, and then by adding some documentation to it uh, up here, 
I was able to run create metrics and I was able to say over all time, I was able to create this interactive visualization of the metric. Again, this is still a work in progress, but it's something that uh, Rareth and, and myself in particular were working really hard to create a business intelligence framework for R, where people can create these metrics, uh, display them for various kinds of KPIs that always look over time by month or by quarter, split it across different types of dimensions, allow for download, allow everything we might be interested in. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm really glad I got this. The first time I got to show off the tidy metrics and shiny metrics frameworks. Uh, a couple bumps along the way, but really, um, uh, I still think still really uh, uh, interesting, and it's it's something that I'm going to be working on pretty heavily in the future, uh, as well as other tools within the tidyverse for exploring data like maps and animated core plots. All right, uh, that's all the time we have. Uh, I hope you had fun. I certainly did. I'll see you next time.